All right. So good night, guys. This is Gillette with BalloonCoach.com, and I am happy that you are here and wanting to learn more about blogs because blogging is one of those things that I started doing back in 2009, and I'm really glad that I did because it helped my balloon decor company be found by more people because instead of just having a website that stayed stagnant and didn't have updates, people would see my events and I'm telling you, I'm a boring blogger. <laughs> it was, here's a picture of what I created today, here's where I did it at, and here's what I made. But then I did all of the keywords and content so that people could find me because they would look up those keywords like the location that I was at, or they would do the keywords for balloon arch, balloon column, and things like that. Blogging has come a long way since then, and there's this whole great plan that you can use with blogging, and I have found it very useful for me as balloon coach also. So I still do blogging as part of PartyPeopleEvents.com website, and then I also do a blog through Balloon Coach. So I've had some experience doing them, but I want to take my blogs to the next level. And I was really excited that Stasia actually did a wonderful presentation here for me in Lakeland. I'm so lucky that the city that I live in is full of amazing entrepreneurs who enjoy teaching and helping other people gain insights. And so Stasia was a part of, um, did a presentation for my blogging group here in Lakeland. And after she did her presentation, I said, oh man, I'd really love you to share this with the balloon world. So in case you missed this, you did get an email after you registered for this webinar that has the notes. So if you've not gone into that email yet, you can really quick and you can download them and it's kind of an outline and then you fill in the blanks as she goes through it. Or for some reason your printer is not working, then just grab you some pieces of paper and a pen because you will want to take notes tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and find out who we've got with us this evening with us live and go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know your name and where you're joining us from. All right, so we have John Meyer from Ohio. Yay. <laughs> We've got Kent from San Jose, California. And I was asking them earlier about their weather and there's no snow currently in California, just a lot of rain. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> and then um, let's see, we've got Nancy joining us from Georgia. Welcome, welcome. Um, and um, she does have a blog, but she's not good at keeping up with it. All right. We've got Lorena in Denver. We've got Tiffany in Tiffany Springs, Texas. <laughs> Let's see, we've got, oh, my thing just went. We've got Gia from California. Yay, welcome. Stephanie from Westtown, New York. Cecile from the Bahamas. Hey, you made it back. <laughs> she, yeah, she was just at, um, and so was Gia. We're just at um, World Balloon Convention with me over in San Diego. So great to have you guys on tonight. We've got Danielle from New Orleans, and she just started her blog. Oh, hey. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Yay. So I'm going to take about one more minute, guys. If you want to go ahead and let us know your name and where you're joining us from, what that allows you to do is get used to using the chat box. So if you've not been on this program with me yet, um, this specific um, program for webinars, is there is a box and then it says chat. And you just open that up and you can type in your question and throughout the presentation tonight you can put that up and I'll be your voice when I see questions and I know it's appropriate I'll go ahead and ask and some of them if I already know that they will be answered later I might wait a little bit so just wanted to let you know that and I'm going to go ahead and turn off my screen share and allow you to pick yours up Stasia so you can just go on there and say share screen so that we're able to see your PowerPoint. Yay. Okay, is it filling the screen up? It is. Oh, great. Okay. And then give me just one second for me to find where all my information just went. 
oh no <laughs> yeah it's really fun when that happens sometimes oh, I know. technology <laughs> isn't it great yes mm -hmm. all right guys just give me one second while i get our information out here so i can see your chat boxes great i'm almost there because i don't want to interrupt her while she's talking there are a couple of um, kind of points in the talk where um, you guys will all have a chance to kind of write in the workbook um, and kind of respond, whether you're writing on the physical paper or on a separate piece of paper. But um, for those, is it okay if we just kind of take a minute and then you can let me know when, when that minute's up? Yes. So you want me to, when it's a minute, get, um, give you a 60 second timer? Yeah. Yeah. Or like even a two minute, I can, I can, um, I can I, when, those are, when those are here. Yep, I've got my timer right here. I'll be glad to set that up for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And okay, so Nancy is asking if we can. Um, so you're not hearing Stasia very well? Oh, I can put some headphones in. Hold on, Mom. Okay. I want you guys to <laughs> be able to hear clearly. And I want to. And you should actually be able to increase her volume on your screen. Like you could, should be able to go in and turn up the speakers. Well, is that helpful? Is that better for you guys, John? Is this better? I put some headphones in. That is better. Thank you. Oh, great. You're so welcome, you guys. All right, so we're good to go. Awesome. Okay, well, um, thank you so much for just inviting me on here to spread the word about how wonderful blogging is and um, how I really think that it's a tool that can not only lead to um, success in your business, but I also believe that it's a great personal outlet um, and a great way to just connect with other people. So I'm all about connection. So, uh, so I'll say good night to everyone. I'm not used to saying that to so many people. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you and I uh, can't wait to dive right in. Can everybody see the PowerPoint okay? So guys, just let me know that you are seeing her PowerPoint with her photo. Yes. Awesome. Great. Um, is my face showing up? I can't. I can't. Yes. Yeah, so oh. you and I are there in small okay. and then your um, PowerPoint is large. Okay, um, just so you know, I also have notes that I'll be reading from, so I hope it, I hope that's okay for you guys. I'll try to make some eye contact with you too. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm just curious kind of how the questionnaire turned out for you, um, kind of who started a blog, who hasn't. Um, did you say there are a couple of people that, that have started blogs already? Yeah, so Maybe. this... So go ahead, because not everybody answered that question. So what I would love okay. you to do is put no blog yet, yes, I have a blog, or I have one, but I don't use it. So right now we've got one that says no blog yet. <laughs> um, Great, okay. So we have several that say no blog. We're at about six okay. now. Um, awesome. Another people that have one, but they don't use it enough. Okay. And then another person that they've just started one recently. Um, a couple that are starting to um, blog and figuring out the particulars of it. So yes. This perfect timing. This, this honestly is perfect. Um, and I think the beautiful thing about what we're about to go through is that whether you have started a blog already, um, you've had a blog, you haven't done much with it or haven't blogged at all. I think everyone can really get something from just these three um, things that you shouldn't launch your blog without. Um, I do want to start a little back, a little backstory on me. Um, I put up, kind of my bio there so if you guys want to read that too um, but I am originally from New England I hail from uh, New Hampshire and, and Massachusetts uh, born in Boston grew up in New Hampshire so I see some New Englanders are up there um, I mean in the chat too so that's cool um, I gosh I started blogging way back way back gosh 2005 um, with a little blog that you know I'll talk more about um, in a few minutes, but I, I only wanted to share a message with people and I didn't know how powerful it would be um, and how well it would be received. Um, so I'm just really hopeful that during our time together, um, I can share some things with you that'll be um, helpful in equipping you to move your blog forward. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down, put them in the chat, um, send them my way. 
um, I'm happy to help you guys. So that is what I do currently. I help um, entrepreneurs and heart-centered creatives launch empowering blogs of their own. Um, I help them go through that process. Um, I, I save them time. I save them money. I walk alongside them. Um, it is a passion of mine and it's something that brings me life. So um, it's okay if it's confusing for you. Um, there are people out here that want to help you do that. Um, so I'm here for you. Yeah. Um, woohoo. Um, so great. Thank you guys for answering that question. I'm, I'm always so curious to know kind of who, where everyone's at. Um, and if you're just here just because you want to hang out, that's great too. Welcome. Uh, nice to meet you. And just to let you know up front, so as you're going through the presentation, a couple yeah. said they would really like to start one, but they really have questions about what platform to use. Okay. Yeah. And that kind of thing. And I know you'll okay. hit on that. Yeah. 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 I'll definitely touch on that. Um, we, we later in the presentation, will talk about different mediums that you guys want to use to present your information. So I'll be sure to jot that down and make a special comment for you. Awesome. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, I said 2005, I meant 2011. Back in 2011, I uh, had my very first college internship. And um, it was it was an unbelievable experience. I had the opportunity to go work for the Department of Defense. I was selected to be one of 50 people worldwide that was involved in this internship program. Um, gosh, it was just a once in a lifetime sort of experience. I mean, I, I would get dressed in my little, you know, suit. I would, I would take the Metro. I would go to the Pentagon every weekday. I would get my little cubicle. And I mean, I was just in heaven. And I, I wish that I could share that story with, I mean, share my experience with my friends, with my family, but they weren't there with me that summer. And so I knew that um, writing something, you know, creating some sort of way that they can keep up with me and I can share some stories um, would be a great avenue. So I started a little free blogger account. Um, it's called My City Steps. I can, if you guys really want the link to that, I can share that with you. Um, but it's, it's somewhere out in the inter, interweb now. Um, but it was really cool to see that it started that early for me. Um, and as I was actually writing this talk, it was so funny. I, I looked up the exact date that I created the blog and it was May 26th, 2011 is when I launched it. Um, gosh, it was about seven years ago. And then, um, when I launched stasiarose.com, it was May 25th, 2015. So, I mean, it was just wild. I didn't know that the days would be so close and not, Almost on the anniversary of one blog, I launched the other one. So, um, gosh. And then fast forward. So internship was great. I got my master's degree at Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida. Um, once I finished that, I was thrust in full force to corporate America. And anyone out there that remembers that transition or is experiencing that transition, um, you'll know that it is, it is its own, uh, it's a, it's its own animal, honestly. And as a little, you know, I don't even know, 21, 22 year old, by the time I finished my master, I was 22. And I was just so ill prepared for certain aspects of corporate America that, um, gosh, the classroom just didn't prepare me for. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking like, working with people 30, 40 years, my senior, um, gosh, in meetings where I don't feel seen, I don't feel heard, um, running meetings and people are talking down to me just because I'm young. Um, I mean, wardrobe malfunctions, I mean, public speaking, um, both public speaking and wardrobe malfunctions happen. I mean, I, I just feel like there was so much that I, experienced on a day-to-day -day basis, some great, and then some not so great. I just felt like if there was someone who could have told me some of these things, maybe it would have been helpful. Um, then I just felt on my heart that I could do that for someone else. I felt like if there's some way that I can share some of these stories and experiences with people that would help them, I, I want to do that. Um, so, I mean, I've always loved writing. And so I just knew that 
you know, maybe I could create a blog, a reservoir of all my stories and experiences and people can access it at any time. So that is what I did. Um, and that is why I launched stagerose.com with the intention of sharing my story and experiences with other people. Now people ask me, where did Stage of Rose even come from? Like, how did you even get that name? Well, um, my full name is Anastasia Rose Jones Downing. I got a long one. I mean, there's 26 <laughs> letters, 26 full letters, the whole alphabet, the 26 letters in my name. Um, and so I just, I felt like that URL would be, I knew it would be available, but I, I didn't know if it would be the most useful um, kind of URL to purchase. So Stasia Rose, it was, and I love it. Um, if you're out there and you're thinking about kind of what your domain name should be, I recommend your name if it's not already taken. Um, and if it is taken, kind of move the words around a little bit to um, find something that is available. But I recommend using your name as a URL, depending on the kind of blog you want to start. Um, so I launched it. Um, gosh, I'd spent, it consumed me. I mean, I spent hours and hours and days and nights, sleepless nights, researching how to launch a blog. I mean, like Pinterest, like I was researching on Google. I was listening to podcasts. I mean, it, it literally consumed me. And I mean, I still had a job. <laughs> like I had, uh, I, I'd say it was nine to five, but it was more like seven to six. So you know how that goes. Um, but I mean, it consumed me. It brought me so much joy, but it took up so much time. And I wanted to do it right. I, I mean, I quickly realized that, you know, I had all the information. I just had to execute it. And I think that's a hurdle for some people. Honestly, it's, it's, they don't have someone that's there with them, um, guiding them through the execution phase. So they don't know if what they're doing is right. And it's just, it's all up here, honestly. Um, but just the clients that I have worked with um, have told me that it's very helpful having someone kind of to hold them accountable and encourage them along the way. So, um, gosh, that is also what I do. And that's why I know there's a need for it because if I had someone like that with, for me, it would have been much quicker. Um, and I'm teaching you guys all the things that it took me like, you know, weeks and years and months to learn. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I did a bunch of research. Like I said, May 25th, it was 2015. I launched my blog. Um, gosh, and the response was so amazing. I mean, people from, people that I hadn't talked to in years, people that I didn't even know um, would tell me that it was helpful for them, would leave comments, would private, like email me, um, thanking me for sharing. Um, it resonated with people. And I... I mean, I literally thought my mom would read it. That's one person. That's one visitor. Um, I have two siblings, but they might not give me the time of day. So, I mean, so I'm just counting on like two hands, the amount of people that I think will read it. And I mean, it was just, it just blew my mind, the response. Um, so that's something I would even tell you, you know, if you've already launched a blog or something's holding you back, you're not sure how people will respond to it. Just I mean, just give it a chance, give it a shot. You'd be surprised people, um, especially when they hear that you're doing something new and something different, they're intrigued. Um, so yeah, more on that later, but, um, gosh, so let me, let's just dive right in. So everybody, you have your, um, workbooks, your worksheets. I made this for you guys cause I really wanted, um, to be helpful and for you guys to, you know, be able to follow along and, um, keep this forever frame it if you want. Um, so anybody who's watching on the replay, go back, download your notes, <laughs> and then you can follow along and easily take them. Yes. I'm just going to grab some water real quick. Go right ahead. Mm. All right. So jumping in. Three things you shouldn't launch your blog without. Numero uno. You shouldn't launch your blog without a story to tell. And I have my handle there if you have Instagram or Twitter. You shouldn't launch your blog without a story to tell. Um, so, I mean, I just shared with you guys, you know, one of my stories, a couple of them. Um, I shared with you guys, you know, my internship in, in D.C. 
I shared with you guys my journey through, um, you know, in corporate America. Um, those are just two of the things, two of the reasons why I launched my blog. Um, and when I first launched my blog, you know, my tagline was I help a blog dedicated to young professionals succeeding early on in their careers. And I think the thing that helped me maintain my blog, um, because so often you start blogging, you have all this momentum and then it falls off. Um, that's a common thing. I think the thing that helped me maintain my blog and build a solid foundation was the fact that I had done so much heart work and it had roots. Like it had story behind it. It, it had a purpose. Um, everything that I wrote had to do with inspiring, empowering, equipping young professionals. And all of my blog posts are still on my blog. I mean, you can, and for a reason, like you can, you can scroll all the way down in my blog, www.stasiarose.com. You can scroll all the way down and see my very first little baby blog post. I mean, you can see the transformation. You can see, um, you know, different topics I tried, different different experiences I went through, you can see all of it. And no matter if, you know, the, the topic of your blog shifts over time or transforms or evolves, the roots are still there. The foundation is still there. Um, and so it has more of a chance of survival and, and thriving. Um, so just a side note, that is not a part of this uh, presentation. <laughs> Um, great. So we all have a story. We've all gone through our own unique journeys. You have too. Um, and the stories that we have are powerful. And I believe that it is a catalyst for change in other people's lives. Um, people that you may never meet will read your blog and will feel like they can. Um, they'll read your journey of launching your own business and feel like they can too. Um, and that's, gosh, that's what, that's what the internet should be about. Um, so if you're sitting there questioning, if you have what it takes to be a blogger, um, if you're sitting there telling yourself all these different limiting beliefs and reasons as to why you can't do it, or you're not a good writer, or you don't have the time, or, you know, we can come up with as many as we want. Um, I'm here to tell you that your story is enough and your story is powerful. Don't focus on being, uh, just you know, a writer, focus on being a storyteller. And that should kind of help shift your perspective. You can do this. Um, so we're going to do one, um, we're going to do three exercises, you know, during our time together. But the first one um, is we're going to take a minute, two minutes, probably two minutes, um, and write down five experiences. Um, so for this, imagine that you and I, you know, it's, it's a, you know, I don't know, Friday afternoon and you got off work the whole day. So you're, you don't have to work. Um, gosh, you have nothing to worry about. And you and I are just going to sit down and we're going to grab a cup of coffee and we're just going to talk. We're going to learn about each other. I'm going to ask you questions about yourself. You're going to ask me questions. Um, literally the only thing we have to worry about is getting to know someone. Um, so if I were to ask you, uh, what are five things that have, that have occurred in your life that you couldn't tell me your story without mentioning these five things? Um, I mean, they're just like, they're markers, markers in your life. Um, so a couple of mine I shared my internship in DC formative for me. Um, I'll share a personal one. When I was very young, my father passed away. Um, and that has been very transformative to me. Some of the content that I've written has been around that as well. Um, gosh, finishing, you know, with my master's degree um, in business, huge formative for me. So let's take a couple minutes, write down five different experiences. They can be fun. I mean, they can be fun experiences too. Maybe you went skydiving and it just really, you know, or maybe you traveled the world and it just really opened your mind to, you know, different possibilities. So. I'll stop talking. You pick five experiences and then meet me back here um, in a couple minutes. Cool. So I'm starting the timer so you can start writing.
you got about 30 seconds still, so keep thinking. <clears throat> One of our people did go skydiving last year. No way. <gasps> I wonder where. That is petrifying. Oof. <laughs> I went once and I, I promised myself I'd never go again. <laughs> I was not prepared, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're at the two minute part. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so I hope you guys had the opportunity to write down five key life experiences. Um, I, I tell you what, we'll do more with that later. Um, but the ability to connect and be courageous and vulnerable, even in sharing those. Um, bravo, bravo to you. Um, okay, so our first point, you shouldn't launch your blog without a story to tell. <clears throat> our second, you shouldn't launch your blog without a desire to connect with others. So those How, are the blanks, connect. That, yeah, those are the <laughs> blanks, desire, connect, and other. Um, I can't tell you how many times, um, gosh, people have said, you know, <clears throat> I'm a private person. You know, I don't, I don't want, I don't really want to share like my stories with people or then maybe honestly, maybe blogging isn't for you. Um, there is a difference between being personal and sharing personal information and sharing private information. I don't share private information. Um, I mean, I'm, I'll share personal stuff. I'll be vulnerable. I'll tell you, you know, about, you know, my father passing away. I'll write all about it. I'll be open. I'll be vulnerable. I'll be, you know, courageous in sharing that information. But I'm probably not going to talk about private matters that happen in my life or in my family life. I, so I want to communicate that to you guys, too. Like, there is a distinction between personal and private. Um, and that, that line is what you determine. Um, but if you, if you don't want to connect with other people, then blogging might not be for you. But if you want to connect with other people, if you want to inspire other people with your story, your experiences, um, even people that you've never met, if you want to be that light out in the, you know, um, worldwide web, then do that. I say, yes, join me. Um, but blogging is all about connecting with others. So you shouldn't launch your blog without a desire to connect with others. Um, there's also a blank in there that I, <laughs> I did not include in this PowerPoint, but you guys will have a bonus. Um, remember, blogging is all about connection. So the blank underneath blogging is all about connection. Um, and your desire to connect with other people <clears throat> will will drive that connection too. So um, you know, I I pulled some of the analytics even when I first when I first gave this talk um at the Bloggers Unite meeting in Lakeland. And at that point, you know, I had had thirty thousand unique visitors. I mean I do have thirty thousand unique visitors to my view to my page every year. Um, and this is when I was still, you know, working full time and all of that, that, that is how many people have referred back to my blog posts in a calendar year on average. Um, I mean, it blows my mind. It really blows my mind because these are all people that are reading my stories. And I mean, I've had people reach out to me saying that they printed off my blog posts and distribute it to their class because it was so helpful. I've had people say this blog post literally helped me get a raise. Wow. I mean, make more money. <laughs> like how it just feels so good to know that you're genuinely paying it forward. Um, and people, it's helping people while you're sleeping. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, it's had, you know, a uh, hundred and eighteen thousand page views. So it's had 30,000 unique visitors a year. That's 30,000 different IP addresses, but 118,000 page views. So if you do the math, like people that come to your blog, they're going to click around. They're going to want to see what other blog posts you have. They're going to come back for more, you know, and that's what you want. Um, and there is just no, there's no possible way 
that I would have been able to meet, even talk to a fraction of these people. Um, I mean, it's just really amazing <clears throat> the impact that your blog can make. So all that to say, connection is key. Um, blogging is all about connection. Um, and so, you know, the topics and the categories that you choose to blog about are going to be what, you know, gets people intrigued. Um, you know, especially if you have some things in common with, with the audience that you're trying to reach. Um, and they can be the catalyst for, you know, building these kind of connections, um, which is super helpful. So some of you might, you know, also be interested in other topics, you know, like fashion or, you know, um, reading or um, only you know what those things are. Um, so for the next few minutes or the next, maybe we could do a minute for this one. Okay. Um, right here on this page, you want to write, there are five topics. So you want to list five different interests or passions that you have. Um, there should be one that maybe everyone has in common. Um, but if you want to list the others, um, kind of take a few minutes to do that. So whether it's career, um, writing, reading, essential oils, it could be something. Um, so whatever those are. And can I throw something out there real quick? Yes, absolutely. For those of you who are wanting to be very specific to your balloon business, these five topics can be things that would interest your customers, like how to put on a perfect party, how to do things safely, um, how to add color, things that make you happy when you celebrate. Yes. So you, if you're not wanting to go out on a limb and do some other type of blog, but you're wanting to do something very specific to your business, these topics can be business related. All right, I'm starting the timer. Okay, perfect. And a minute is up. Awesome. I hope you guys had <clears throat> some time to get all those down. Um, and if you keep thinking of them, feel free to fill them in later. Um, but one way that we can begin building these genuine connections is by weaving our life experiences, which you already wrote down five of those, and these topics or these stories together. So when we weave our interests and our experiences together, we can create these meaningful connections with our audience. Um, it's not just, you know, throwing information at them and, and it's, it's not cold. It, it suddenly becomes meaningful. It becomes warm, um, personable. Um, it feels like they're, they're talking to you. You're, I mean, it feels like you're talking to them. Um, and this is really hard for some people to do. Um, and, you know, that's why it is important to be able to articulate the exact formula that you're using to create your content. Um, and so this is a great uh, place to start for you guys. So uh, what, I, what I also want to just encourage you and say, when you do this, um, when, you, when you weave your story, which is so unique um, and it's specific to you, your journey, with these, exp these interests that you have, um, that other people that are, might be common, like other people might have these interests. When you weave those together, you create art. You create something that's never been created before, that has never been said before. It's never been said in the way that you've said it before. Um, 
and it's unique. And that's the beauty about, you know, doing it this way is you create content that's unique that can't be found anywhere else. Um, and I view my writing as my art. Um, I do ghost writing too. And I, I, even though someone else's name is on it, I still view it as my art um, because it's something that that's, was created out of nothing and came from my heart. And I'm sure that's how you guys feel too when you create your, your balloon creations. It's like you, you've created something that has never existed and won't exist again because it's unique to you. Um, so they become unique. So the more that you can you know, partner uh, maybe you pick, you know, choose one experience that you wrote down and try to see kind of if there's a, a thread that connects that experience to one of the interests that you currently have. Um, and there might be multiple threads. So, you know, one of my experiences was entering corporate America for the first time and really um, feeling like a fish out of water. And, and then that birthed in me this interest in helping young professionals succeed early on in their careers. I had this, this thread that connected the two and that is what my, my site was founded on. That's, that's how I got started. That's the content I wrote. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Um, the, the, the blanks down here, we build meaningful connections with our audience by weaving experiences and our interests together. Hope that's helpful. Um, okay, so um, gosh, one of my, and just along the lines with interests and experiences, um, I kind of touched on it earlier, but um, when I was very young, my father passed away and it, it, it created in me this um, this, I mean, that's probably why I started writing because I had so many emotions. I was so young. I didn't know how to verbalize them even, um, or feel comfortable doing it. So I wrote, I started writing and it became this discipline that I've kept gosh for years. Um, but the one blog post, one of the blog posts that I contributed to Darling Magazine, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of Darling Magazine before, um, but they have an online publication. And um, I've contributed to them pretty regularly. Um, and one of the ones that I wrote was one of my most popular um, was titled An Open Letter to the Fatherless Daughter. And um, I wrote all about my experience. And, and gosh, the response was overwhelming. Um, I was able to create meaningful connections with people in different countries. I mean, it was pretty amazing. So, you know. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a rewarding experience too, very emotional experience as well, but it was unique, you know, it was my art, so um, great. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. Uh, you shouldn't launch your blog without, it's on this page here, you shouldn't launch your blog without a medium to share your story with the world. I made the blank longer so you guys can just write the whole thing in, but you shouldn't launch your blog without a medium to share your story with the world. Um, yeah, I mean, and, oh, let's just read this next one. This next one is a bonus one. I got to give it to you. I'll, I'll read it. Um, remember, if your audience can't find you, how can they connect with you? So I'll even repeat that again. So if your audience can't find you, how can they connect with you? Um, and it seems like it's a pretty simple concept, but the more intentional that we can be with, with where we choose to or how we choose to share our blog or how we choose to communicate with our audience, it's important. Um, so when this kind of goes along with you know, platforms, there are so many different platforms that you can use, mediums that you can use to share your story. Um, my website is on Weebly. Um, I chose Weebly because, um, gosh, it was years ago. And it's, it's just a very intuitive system. You drag, you drop, you can create your own site. Um, you don't need to know code. You, I mean, you know, if something happens, um, they have support. 
A lot of people also go with Squarespace. However, WordPress <coughs> is... <laughs> Um, That's what I use. <laughs> yes. Um, it offers like maximum um, customizations. So, um, and it is very common. It's very popular. Um, I mean, but you do have to know, you know, um, either no code or, or have someone that can write code and kind of help you um, should you need to make sort of edits and adjustments to the template that you choose. Um, so all that to say, I can't recommend one specific platform. Um, I can say that there are three that I, um, that I do tell people about, which is Weebly, Squarespace, and WordPress. Um, it really just depends on the, the requirements or the functionality that you're looking for. Um, but I would start researching those three. And um, hopefully you can find something that um, works best for you and your you know, your organization or your business. Um, um, one person asked if blogger, blogger is still a thing. Um, I, I mean, my first blog was on blogger. Um, I, and I had it when it was called something even different than that. It was called blog yeah. spot. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blogger. I mean, I, I honestly am very unfamiliar with, with the interface now. I mean, I haven't, gosh, I haven't used it in years. Um, and I don't know of anyone currently using it. So my gut says, I don't know. I don't think it's, <laughs> but, but if you not find, one of the top ones, yeah, not right. Right. It's free. Um, so, I mean, just depends on, it's hard too because what, what you want from your blog is to drive people to your site. Um, so, I mean, if, if Blogger does allow you to create a website, great. Um, but if not, I think it could maybe do more harm than good in, in people finding, people clicking through to get to your site and then leaving your site, going to Blogger, going back to your site. It could get tricky. This is a question I'm not sure if you know the answer to, and if not, I will check with someone who does. Yeah. Um, she says she currently has her site through Wix and there's a blog function on it, but she's wondering if she should switch to another platform, and if she does, can she move her blog? So um, I have a friend that uses Wix, and it, it operates similar to Weebly and Squarespace, but I think um, it is less expensive, but I think it has similar, a similar capability to be able to like export the information um, you would have to see if it, depending on what platform you switched to, um, whether it's Squarespace or if it's WordPress, you might have to ask a professional how that would happen. But I know for Weebly, there is a way to download my, my whole website into a file and um, I could move it and re-upload it somewhere else. Um, some of the information might be a little switched around, but it would be um, easier than manually moving everything. Does that help? Yeah. And I know for me, um, one of the things with WordPress is you can put blogs in and you can date them from whenever. So I could actually technically copy paste information from my old one and put it into the new one and put the past date. Um, so that is something that can be done. But that's they, great. They had asked um, for you to repeat the three platforms that you recommend. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I usually tell people Weebly. Squarespace or WordPress, depending on the functionality you're looking for. Um, Weebly is a little less expensive than Squarespace, um, but Squarespace, I think, is, gosh, they're just moving. They just keep innovating, keep doing new things. So, um, I mean, if I do switch platforms, it would probably be to Squarespace, but I, I'm, happy where, <laughs> I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy with Weebly, so. And, um, and they asked what platform I use. I currently use WordPress. That was the website that I had Party People events set up in. And then also Mindy, who helps me with a lot of my computer stuff, is very well That's trained really, in that. Yes. And so when you talk about plugins and platforms and like that, mm -hmm. I was able to find someone who understands all that and takes care of that part for me if anything has to change. And then you guys have seen transformations with Balloon Coach. Mm. And you look one way and now it's got new colors. Well, that's a WordPress site, and we just simply changed the template that was running, but the content still stayed there. So, and I think with most of the other platforms, they have those kind of variables too that you can do correct, Stasia. 
Yes, absolutely. So. absolutely. Um, if you were to see my very first um, site, my very first iteration of stageyourrose.com, I mean, I think about it now and it's funny. It's, it's just, it, it's come so far. Um, and so I, I want to tell you that too. You, when you launch your blog, it does not have to be perfect. People enjoy seeing the transformations. They enjoy seeing the new templates, the new plugins. They enjoy being a part of that journey. So, um, you know, when you launch it, obviously do your best. I want you to feel good about it. Um, but just know it doesn't have to be like at Z. If you're starting at A, like you can get to C and you can get to D and people can watch and kind of tune in along the way. And the more that you do it and the more that you run your business from your site and the more that you blog, the more you'll discover these different, you know, requirements that you need and the more you'll know exactly what changes to make that are intentional. Um, but the journey is the best part. So just allow yourself to go on the journey um, and allow people to be a part of it with you. That's awesome. And yes, like with me, my blog is not separate. It's a part of my website. Mm -hmm. um, and what that does is it allows you to have, I'm answering one of the questions that are on there. It that allows you to have that updated content. So on partypeopleevents.com, we have a blog. It says, see what's new or current events. And it lets me go in and put photos of our most recent events. And then I talk about it and describe it. Um, and then for Balloon Coach, you know, it's a platform where I'm helping people grow their balloon businesses. So then that blog content's a bit different than yes. my, the blog that I have as a balloon company. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yay. So one of the things that she's talking about is making sure that you're connecting with your audience and you're connecting with people. And that's something that we talked about in January with our speaker, with Kelly Swanson, is she was talking about the power of story. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things where I was really excited to have Stasia to talk with us on this is because the power of story is so important today because people like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. So oh, yeah. if you're writing a blog that's sharing part of your experience and your journey and your business, and you can connect some of your passion points, it's a really great way for people to connect with you and to know you better as a business owner too. I love that. And every blog post can have the same formula. Every single one that you write, um, we've something in there about you, something in there, you know, about the topic, um, and ask a question too. I mean, at the end of your blog post, feel free to ask questions of your audience. Like, Hey, was this helpful? Or like, what are some tips that you can think of? Or did I leave anything out of this list? Gives people the opportunity to interact with you and gives them permission to do that too. So always end your blog posts with a call to action. Guys, I think that is it. Oh yeah, so um, you don't have to do this now, but just maybe tonight, think of some mediums that you can use um, to help you, you know, kind of start brainstorming um, whether you already have a website um, or you need to create one, whether you already have a blog or you need to create one, um, you know, just start using those. And then- Can, can you describe a little bit what a medium is? Oh well? yes. So um, when I use the term medium, I mean, you know, a way that you want to connect with your audience. So um, some people might specifically use a blog. Some people might use Instagram and they might be more photograph based. Um, some people might do photo journalism and use their blog, but only images and like some, some text, but not much. Um, some people might want to, you know, share their story using um, video. I mean, some people might want to do, you know, vlogging, video, you know, blogging or um, podcasts. So, you know, figure out the method that you want to connect, you want people to connect with you um, and how you want to connect with them. So that's what I mean by medium. Um, and you might not have five. You might literally just have one. You might have two. Um, is that helpful? That is. Good. Good, good, good. Um, so if you are on the line and you are, you know, wanting to know more about blogging, wanting to, I mean, you have some steps to take here. Um, but if you want 
you know, more information on how to launch a blog. Um, I'm doing a virtual blogging workshop. Um, it's going to be two hours um, and we're just going to walk through step by step through, you know, the whole process that I went through um, launching a blog. So I'm just going to outline for you, um, you know, the research portion, the strategy, and then some of the execution pointers and tips. Um, try to share with you the most helpful things um, that I learned that can really honestly set your blog apart and create some uh, traction for you to go, um, you know, go out and do the thing. So um, I also do private one-on-one -on -one, um, blog coaching and strategy um, where we kind of build it out together. Um, I love doing that. So um, if you're interested in just collaborating or connecting with me, um, you know, outside of this, feel free. That's my website. Um, you can contact me there. Um, but the workshop I think is going to be really cool, especially um, if you want to learn more about blogging and what that would look like for you and your business. And you, so, yeah, it's, it's April 14th from one to three. It should be in the back of your workbook. Yep. Great. Perfect. Last said units. Awesome. So now the other thing is you said that you had a gift for us and something, a part of a chapter of your book, I believe. I do. I do. I'm so glad you brought that up. And you also have a way for us to just go ahead and purchase the whole book if we wish. So I do. Yes. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, I wrote a book on how I launched my blog. It's called Blog Like a Boss. The beginner steps to next level blogging on any platform um, and it really kind of dives into deeper detail the steps that I took to launch my blog I think um, when I first launched gosh back in 2015 it was really um, honestly not a lot of people that I knew were even blogging at that time it was kind of on the early or end uh, at least for my crew to even launch blogs so I was the first one doing it um, in a lot of my circles and gosh, people would just ask me like, how do you blog? How are you doing it? I want to do it too. You know, it just created a buzz. Um, and I got the same question. I mean, I had so much coffee on these coffee dates that people would ask me too. I just was like over caffeinated sharing my love for blogging with everyone. But I realized that there was a need and there was a need that I could fill. Um, and so I created an ebook on how I the process that I went through and why um, for launching my blog. So I had a couple of values when I wrote it. I wanted it to be completely digital because I wanted it to be something that, you know, someone could take with them, um, have on their phone or have on their computer, something that could be, um, you know, transportable, if that makes sense. I didn't want it to be a physical book, which doesn't even make sense to some of you, I'm sure, but it, it works. Um, I wanted it to be a quick read. Um, I didn't want it. I wanted it to be something that you could read at one time in 30 minutes and then go do. Um, so that's why I created it. So blog like a boss. It is on the Amazon Kindle store. Um, you can download the Amazon Kindle app completely free. You don't need a physical Kindle to read my ebook. You could literally just have your phone um, or your computer and have the Kindle app. It's in the Android market and the um, iPhone market. So, um, and it's free. So yeah, check it out. Um, and you know, if you just want a taste of what the book is, is about and you want to just read the first chapter, um, I made that available to anyone that's interested. So there is a link for a free digital download for the first chapter of my book. Um, feel free to download that, check it out. Um, if you want to learn more, um, you can do that and then get the ebook and then ask me any questions and all that jazz. Yay. Is that helpful? That is very helpful. So I wanted to make sure you guys know that because I know a lot of times people do enjoy having yeah. those e books to refer mm -hmm. back to and check on. So this is the time to open up guys. I know um, we covered up some great information and if you have questions specific to blogging, getting started or anything that you're a little bit fuzzy about, that um, stage of coverage tonight, this is your time to ask those questions. All right. And so what I'm going to do, stage, is I'm going to go oh, ahead yeah. and take back the screen. Oh, great. Okay. 
I don't know what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> you're good. No, you did great. Okay. <laughs> All right. We got to thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Let me all right, so if anybody else has a question, please let me know. Um, I'm not sure if mine started yet. Oh, Nancy. Oh, yay, Nancy. Uh, <laughs> you're so sweet. You inspired me to jump back on my blog and go full speed ahead. Yes. That's yay. What I'm talking about. <laughs> Love that. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let me see if I can get my computer. Oh, Tiffany. You guys are seriously the best. Like you're so kind. Look at you being all nice and encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with my computer? This is always fun. Oh yeah. Well guys too, if you're, if you're out there, um, and you want to, you know, blog and write content, but maybe you don't have time to do that. Um, I know there are a couple different avenues that you guys can go, but one of them, um, if you're interested in writing content that maybe isn't even balloon related, um, you let me know and I can even help you do that too. Um, like I said, I do ghost writing. Um, I have, you know, clients on retainer that help that I help create content for. Um, I'm a, I'm like obsessed with writing. So if it's something that's annoying for you, um, that's okay. Um, we just have a conversation over the phone, journalism style. Um, and then I, you know, give you some of that blog content too. So, all right. And I want to make sure I've got it right. It's blog like a boss. Yes. By Stasia Rose. So that would be the book, um, to look up, um, on Amazon blog, like a boss by Stasia Rose or yes. also on her notes that she gave you. Um, if you're on her website. Yeah. Did I include yeah. on that? I hope I did. I think so. The blog, like a boss workshop. Oh, that's through event, right? I can even, honestly, I can find it real quick. Yeah. Type it up here for me. Well, just yeah. stagerose.com is actually on the front of your handout. The stagerose.com. Okay. Am I back? Sorry. My computer just did something All right, so one strange. of the questions is somebody uses um, the word articles instead of a blog. Is that a good thing to do? I'm not sure what that is. So I yeah, neither do I. Um, <laughs> so but I mean, maybe not if I don't know. <laughs> so the question for that is word articles. Is that a part of your website? Like, would it drive traffic to your actual website? I think that's the question, yeah, that I would, I'm curious about. Um, All right, now here's a, a new question for you. Yeah. They'd be interested in any tips you can share on driving traffic to your blog outside of yeah. SEO. Like, what tactics did you use to drive the traffic when you posted a new blog post. Yeah, yeah, so um, I'll cover this more in detail in the webinar on April 14th, um, mm -hmm. but um, just a couple of tips. I mean, I shared it on my Facebook, I shared it on all my social media platforms. Um, and another tactic that I used was I was involved in, in different groups on Facebook, like business groups or even like college, um, college groups. I mean, I, I worked at a university for years um, and, you know, had some of those connections. So I was just, I was around my audience. So my tip for you would be find out where your audience is, whether that's LinkedIn, um, Pinterest, whether that's Instagram, Twitter, um, and share your content on those platforms. Um, and encourage your friends to share your content too. I mean, it's really okay if you you know, have a friend, you say, Hey, I just posted a blog. Do you mind sharing it with your, with your network as well? Um, people are usually happy to do that. Um, so I hope that is helpful. It's a great question. Cool. And Lorena, back to you. What that is, is, um, what you're looking at is when you're setting up your website, when you're going to the back, that's what the back is calling it. So yes, you're good. That is your blog for your website. 
It's just the backward back end way of getting there. <laughs> so, um, yay. Well, I am glad so many of you were on live tonight to get this information. Yes. Um, because like I said, for me, um, using a blog was a way to get people onto my website and have new content. And one of the things that Stasia talked about is sometimes it might be just like a photo blog, you know, that you're putting up your photos of what you do and that's okay. Um, somebody asked earlier about, um, is it okay if their photos aren't great? I typically say if you're in the balloon industry, you should have one of the newest smartphones because they all have great cameras these days yeah. and yep. there's amazing editing programs. So like if you're still a flip phone, which I did meet somebody um, about a month ago when my, I was at my dad's house, a friend of his opened up his phone and it's a flip phone still on. I was trying to put my phone number in. I oh, wow. To do it. Yeah. <laughs> you're like these buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are, what are these? <laughs> I don't know how to work that. Um, but most smartphones these days, the newest versions have great cameras and then they have the editing features that you can use. Um, or you need to get with someone who's a great, that is a photographer and needs yes. some extra time to come to your events. Because if you're in the balloon industry, our balloon industry is based on people seeing our photos. Yeah, that's so good. So you need to find a good way to capture them um, with or without a blog. That's great, honestly, because that's what's going to keep people there. I mean, the blog might pull people in, but what's going to keep people there? They want to see, you know, images, things that you've done. They want, they want you to prove your work to them before they even call you. Um, so yeah, that's great. Cool images. All right. <laughs> Sarah, tell me that a flip phone's a step up from the landline. Yes, I do agree. Yes, yes, um, yes. I was in an area that we couldn't even put me on video chat because the internet wasn't strong enough to. No, what did you do? Um, they didn't see me that week. I, they just heard me talking, and then okay, yeah. my presenter was in a good place, and they could see her, but they couldn't see me. It was great. Um, so I just want to go ahead and make sure while we're at the end of this webinar that you all know where to find things mm -hmm. on ballooncoach.com because we have been changing things around a little bit. Your member access is right here. So you can always find your old replays and things there. If you need to see my blog and some of the inspiration I have going on there, click yes. here. Under resources, elevated events. Yay. Our monthly, um, online magazine is back. I finally um, got a new edition up for March. Um, so cool. So cool. So I wanted to let you guys know it's here from my trip in LA. I did an interview with Judy Brought and her husband, Dave, and there's a lot of other great content in here about business building. So go check that out on the website. And then I'm just making sure to give you guys a personal invite. If you are interested in blogging, that means that you're interested in doing something unique with your business and taking your business to the next level. I would like you to join us in Orlando for Promotions and Profits Retreat, November 13th through the 16th. We are staying at the Disney Springs, um, I'm trying to remember which hotel it is. <laughs> there are so many wonderful hotels. I know, hotels it's there. so bad. Seriously. It's the D Disney Springs holiday and it's amazing. It's, we can actually see this hot air balloon at Disney Springs from the hotel. Oh, I love that balloon. And we're going to be going there Friday night and hanging out and having a good time as our wrap up. But if you want to come a day early, you can be a part of our Disney Institute business behind the magic tour. I'm so glad that balloon coach can present this mm. to you. It's something that typically only Fortune 500 companies do or other large companies that are in town for conventions because you can't just go buy an individual ticket for this. You have to go with a group. So I'm excited to give our industry this behind the scenes tour at Disney and have this experience if you wish to join us on Monday. And um, you can pay all of your retreat up front or you can make three payments or six payments. They're all right there. Go ahead and grab your spot. Go ahead and reserve your hotel room now because we are in a tourist area. And mm -hmm. so our prices can go up, even though I have a room block right now for 119, that rate can always go up because it's just part of being in a tourist town. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to pay anything for your hotel room when you reserve. All of our amazing instructors are listed on here. You are going to get to have time with them every day at lunch to hang out and ask them questions. And then we're going to have a really cool dinner going on Thursday night. And I've got some surprises and uh, going on for folks that Thursday night also that I just haven't let anybody know about yet. 
because I'm working on the final <laughs> details. So Stasia knows a little bit about that. I do, I do, I do. I'm, I she let me in on the little secret. So I'm not I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but just saying you might get to see her again, maybe. I don't know. Um so <laughs> that just letting you know that might be a possibility since you guys are on this webinar tonight. Um, but check out our schedule and what's going on. We really have some amazing instructors who run great successful businesses and just want to share with you how you can grow your companies too. So I'd love for you to be there. And our monthly webinars, Chris Potts will be teaching for us on Tuesday night. So that's right around the corner. We'd love to see you guys then. If you have any questions for Stasia, she's giving you her contact information. Yes. You've got her book, go get it, check it out, follow it and do it. Cause here's the thing, just like she said at the beginning, so many times people wait for perfection and I'm letting you know, perfection doesn't exist. It's not real. <laughs> you just have to jump out yes. and do it. Mm -hmm. I, for you guys know, you read my emails. I'm not a great writer. I don't know a lot about punctuation. But what I do is I have a passion about our industry and helping people out. And I have a passion as part of party people events to help people have the best events ever and the best balloon decor. Yes. And the way I share that is through my blog. So if I can do it, you can do it. And now you have this amazing resource from Stasia that tells you all the right things to follow that I didn't even have to follow back when I started. So now you guys have a leg up on me and yours can rock and be way better than mine because you do have this great tool to use. Mm. So Stasia, thank you for spending You're this time. You're so welcome. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> And um, you guys have a great night. And for those of you who came on towards the end, yes, we will have um, the recording of this up tomorrow. I'll send an email out to everyone and I'll put it up on Balloon Coach Community and Balloon Coach Facebook that gives you the link to the replay. Take care, guys. Awesome. Have a great one. And we will see you next time. Thank you. All right. Thanks. See you.